Shoulder instability is sort of the other, um, in addition to some of the ones I talked about, is the other one that I find very interesting, and uh, especially in some of these more complex patients, and what actually is going on within the shoulder. So here's a 22-year-old gentleman, recurrent posterior shoulder instability, 100 plus dislocations, history of a seizure disorder, daily subluxations, and you can see how he is, I and he, are actively actively subluxing his shoulder in and out. So you can see I'm doing a posterior provocative maneuver and you can see his shoulder subluxing in and out of the joint here. His shoulder subjective is obviously very limited um, and you can see how limited he is in, in his overall function. So static x-rays, you can see um, AP or the gray sheet looks pretty normal. The scapula looks pretty normal. There is some, ab there is some uh, posterior decentering on the uh, axillary and you can see on the CT scan, you can also see some posterior decentering. But I think when you see the, uh, the DDR, you can really get an understanding of what's going on. So you can legitimately see his shoulder sublux from in the glenohumeral joint and then out posteriorly back into the glenohumeral joint and back out posteriorly where that bony bank heart is. So you can see on these multiple views how he's, his, his joint is legitimately subluxing from inside the glenohumeral joint out posteriorly to where that uh, prior bony bank heart was from you know probably one of his one of his hundred plus dislocations. You can also see this on the Gracie how he sublux posteriorly and kind of gets caught when he does internal external rotation. Here's another example of a patient who had posterior uh, recurrent posterior shoulder instability, daily subluxations, very limited, had multiple prior surgeries. She did have some latissimus spasms, scapular dyskinesia. You can see she sublux posteriorly. She has glenoid retroversion. In essence, a pretty complex patient who was sent to me for a posterior wedge osteotomy in a 16-year-old, mind you. Because of her latissimus spasm, and this is not the purpose of this talk, but um, because of her latissimus spasm and her scapular dyskinesia, we did a latissimus transfer to her greater curiosity and a pec minor release, and you're able to see, we were able to recenter the, her humeral head and gave her a pretty good overall function. Um, unfortunately, on the right side, the same problem started happening and she had basically the same imaging on the right side. So posterior decentering, this, uh, this example of, 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 of um, not being able to uh, move her shoulder. And the cool thing was we got the DDR on the left versus right. So the left is the side we operate on, did the latissimus transfer, and we, you, see, you can see how we were able to recenter her head. On the right, you can see how she's posteriorly decentered and she's posteriorly subluxed and she's not able to move her shoulder because she's not actually in the glenohumeral joint.